Hello everyone and welcome to yet another Dota 2 tutorial. This time we're going to be recreating the code that is being used by Engineer Operation in the game Dota. Dota 2. Um, if this type of content, like game development stuff, say tutorials, game jams, uh, speed level 3D design and stuff like this interests you, please do like and subscribe. Uh, without any further ado, let's get right into the build. Here we are in a relatively empty project. All I really have set up is a directional light, a plane that uses a check-in material, the main camera and an enemy which contains a collider and a very basic enemy script. Let's take a quick glimpse at this script. All it really does is makes the enemy move to a random position every couple of seconds and it also handles the health of the enemy. This damage function will come in handy later on the video. Okay, create an empty game object called Coldfeet and reset its position so that it is on the center of the level. Now create a new particle system and call it Ground Effects. Set its duration and lifetime to 4 seconds. Start speed to 0. Enable 3D rotation and set its x-axis to be minus 90. Change the color to whatever you want. I'm going for a teal or light bluish. Disable looping. Under emission, set its rate over time to zero and add a burst of five particles. Uncheck shape so that they all spawn at the center of the particle system. Enable color over lifetime and make it fade out. Under Render Settings, I will change its material to be the default particle that comes with Unity. Set its render alignment to be local, and now if you hit play, it should be flat on the ground. Move it up a bit so we can see it. I will set its position to 0.1 on the Y axis so that it does not clip through the flat ground. Cool! Make it a child of our cold feed and create yet another particle system called Frozen FX. Reset its position. For duration and lifetime, I will set it to 3. Disable looping. Start speed to 0. Enable 3D start rotation and make it a random between two constants. Set them all to 360 like this. For color, I will do the same as the one before. Disable play on awake. Set rate over time to 0 and add a burst of 10. Under shape, make it a sphere and I will lower its radius a bit. Enable color of a lifetime and make it fade out. Under render settings, change the render mode to mesh and use whatever mesh you feel like using. I think cube works great for ice. For its material, I will use the default line material that comes with Unity. Set its render view to local. Okay, pretty good, but it could be better. Go up here and under color lower the alpha value. Alright, that's much more like it. Make the frozen effects a child of our cold feed and duplicate the ground effects. Rename it loop effects. This is the particle system that will follow the cold feed so I will set its Y position to be 1. That way it is above the enemy's head. One thing I forgot to do to our ground effects particle system is change its simulation space to world, so that it does not follow the cold fit and stays in place. Okay, great. Now go back to the cold fit game object and give it a new C -sharp script called cold fit. Open it using your programming software of choice and let's begin coding. We will need a transform. This has to be public so that we can assign it later as we create the Colfit game object. We will need a few floats. Their names are pretty self-explanatory and you will see what they do as we use them. A timer to control our damage. Our effects loop we created earlier as a transform. The frozen effects we created as a particle system. A boolean call is frozen that is equals to false by default and lastly, a vector3 to store our spawn location. Inside start, we assign the spawn position to be this transform's position so that we can later calculate how far away we are and use the break distance to destroy this game object if it is too far. Assign the effects loop transform to be the loop effects we created earlier and make sure the names you type here inside the parentheses matches the name of the game object. 
assign the frozen effect as well and if you do not want the enemy to take damage as soon as they get cold feet then you can set the damage timer here like this but the original cold feet ability does deal damage upon cast so i will comment this out inside update we first check if we have assigned a target then inside here we check if we are not frozen then we calculate the distance between the spawn position and this cold feet if the distance is bigger than the break distance then we create a new function down here called stop effects loop and add it in here as well as destroy this game object now if the damage timer is bigger than zero we need to lower it over time and if it isn't then we need to damage the target so create a new function down here and add it inside here now if the duration is bigger than zero we need to lower it as well but if it isn't then we need to freeze the target so create yet another function down here and add it up here lastly we need to set this transformer's position to be the target's position so basically this cold fit game object follows the target when we are not frozen. Now if we are frozen, we need to check if the frozen duration is bigger than zero and if it is, then we lower it over time and if it isn't, then we need to unfreeze the target, so create yet another function and add it here. If we do not have a target, then none of this code should run, so we simply destroy the cold fit game object. All right, all done with update. Let's uh, scroll down to stop effects loop and all we do here is stop the particle system unparented from the cold fit game object and then destroy it using the effects destroy delay variable we will set in the inspector later. Under damage target, we first reset the timer and then we damage our target. I am not sure how to handle damaged enemies in your game, but since I do have an enemy script here, let me show you how easily I am doing it. First I assign a temporary variable and then we check if we do have this variable and call the damage function inside my enemy script. If we take a quick glimpse at my enemy script you can see down here we have a damage function that takes in a float parameter which then we use to lower the health and also check if the health is less or equals to zero so that we can destroy the enemy because we are out of health, right? So pretty simple. Of course, you might have a different setup in your game. This is just an example. Now up here for freeze target, we need to set its frozen to true as well as play the frozen effects we created earlier. You might have a function in your game that handles uh, stunning or freezing enemies, but I do not. So I will simply disable the enemy script and then enable it up here again, as well as destroy the cold fit game object. Alright, that is it for the cold feed code. Now to assign the cold feed to my enemy, I have created this very simple script that basically checks if we have pressed the left mouse button and does a raycast at the mouse position and checks if whatever we are hovering over has the name of enemy. In which case, if it does, then we create the cold feed game object and this, this is the important part you need to access the cold fit script and assign the target. Because, remember, if we do not have a target, the cold fit will automatically destroy itself. So this, make sure you assign the target. So that is pretty much it, let's go back to Unity. Drag the cold fit game object into your project folder to create a prefab then delete it from your scene. Select your prefab and let's assign some of these values. Duration to 4 seconds. Frozen duration to 3 seconds, damage per tick to 1 every 1 second, break distance to 5 units, effects destroy delay to 2 seconds. Now I just have to drag my prefab to my assigned call fit script I created then hit play. So if I click the enemy and yep cool it gets frozen. Let's do it again. Okay, great. Let me change the break distance to two units. Nice, okay, it is all working as intended. 
Now go modify it to better fit your game. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I really hope this was useful for you. Thank you for watching. Thanks to my Patreons for supporting me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.